In this episode of Crypto Over Coffee, I've got Brian from Santiment, a wonderful data platform for those who are looking to understand what's going on in the crypto markets a little better. And in this video today, we're going to talk about uh, market conditions as a whole. We're going to walk through a lot of different things, including looking at data related to whales and shark wallets, what they're doing in the market. We're going to look at how social media trends may be affecting the markets on both ends of the spectrum, the bullish and bear side, uh, and a handful of other things that you're not going to want to miss. So make sure you get subscribed and get ready for all the insights that we've got on hand today. So Brian, uh, do you want to kick, kick things off here? Yeah, you bet. Uh, obviously, market conditions just in the past week have really uh, opened up and become quite volatile. Uh, one could say we've been on a volatile run, mostly in the upward direction, pretty much for the last five months, going back to mid-October. But uh, since we hit that all-time high about two weeks ago, uh, getting just above 73K, things became really tumultuous and a bit more polarized in the markets. Lots of... <clears throat> People trying to sell the tops, sometimes successfully, mostly unsuccessfully. That's kind of the nature of the crypto markets a bit. But uh, some FUD seemed to settle in a bit once Bitcoin was threatening falling below 60K for the long term. And that appeared to be where a lot of big stakeholders started to accumulate. And that's what uh, is relevant to this insight that we just put out today. Uh, and it's regarding a large amount of accumulation, one of the biggest 24-hour periods of accumulation from key shark and whale wallets that we've seen in about a couple of years, uh, to be honest. Uh, it was either the second or third largest day. Uh, we saw specifically the 10 to 10K BTC wallets, which I understand is a very wide range, but this is a key range of wallets that hold about two-thirds of the supply so what they do often, often correlates with where markets go. And you can see the correlation quite well just by looking at their accumulation, especially when the run started. And in the past 24 hours, what they did was accumulate uh, to one of the highest levels we've seen in a couple of years. Their overall amount of coins held, which is 13.19 million BTC, is now the highest since July 10th, 2022. The ratio of Bitcoin supply is the highest since July 6, 2023. So that's factoring in all those mined coins and new you know, assets that have entered the markets in the past couple of years. And in the meantime, the more so-so news is the fact that Tether, represented by this red line, is going down in terms of those key shark and whale ranges, which we deem around $100,000 to $10 million. So when you follow these four lines, uh, from my studies, I've seen a lot of correlation between where markets are going to go next uh, with these lines kind of foreshadowing those, those fluctuations. So Tether and USD coin, that dry powder that we often refer to as necessary for prices to continue to rise, they're at a bit of a low point now. So clearly they've been swapped for Bitcoin. But the Bitcoin that's being swapped in right now is enormous uh, with shark and whale holdings really accumulating uh, heavily, taking from all of those traders who were fudding a couple of weeks ago and, uh, you know, putting them back in their own wallets. So it's really interesting when you look at the like the stable coin thing is, is one that people talk about a lot, which is you, know, said, you said dry powder. That's what you see on chain people can use to purchase different assets, right? In this case, we're talking more about Bitcoin because that's uh, the thing that people are focused on the most. It drives where the market may go next overall. Um, what, so what does that tell you based on the past trends? Obviously, knowing not, no, you know, it's not a perfect science. Is this looking like whales are put, putting their chips on the table, ready for what they think is to be a post-having rise to a new all-time high? Or does this show maybe there's a little bit of risk in some hefty profit taking here mm -hmm. in the shorter term? Yeah, I, I think this is a sign that over the next couple of weeks, they're going to continue to find opportunities to accumulate more. Ideally, I think they're waiting for any small dips. Obviously, the past couple of weeks, it was more of a large dip going down to 60K. But what they're trying to do is get as many coins as possible up until the halving. Uh, it appears. Obviously, you can't speak for all of them. They all have their own opinions and their own strategies. But uh, it, it's pretty clear that this having is anticipated to be a bullish event 
by these key stakeholders and they haven't been shook whatsoever by the uh, mini drop that we saw. So I, I wouldn't even call it a post having run. It's more so what's going to happen going into, you know, that final week of the having, you know, some of you may remember the Ethereum merge, for example, a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. And the prices kind of really surged, especially ahead of Bitcoin during that final week or two before the merge. And then once that merge hit, it had already kind of been priced in and it was a buy the, buy the rumor, sell the news event where the actual news, once it was a successful merge, everything went as planned, then prices actually dropped, people panicked. And then after the panic ensued, that's when the post-merge Ethereum run uh, really kicked into gear. So I could foresee something similar happening here just based on the behavior that's starting to uh, come out in front of us. Yeah, that's an interesting thought. Um, you know, talking, I, I made a video about the having, which I'll link in the description for folks if they'd like to see it, you know, sort of explaining what it is, what to expect from it, and how it's different this time around than it has been in, in you know, in this previous halvings. But it, to me, it seems plausible that something like that unfolds, right? If you look at the behavior of these wallets here, you know, sort of the whales and sharks, the big boys, big girls, whatever you want to say, they've accumulated a lot of coins. It seems plausible that there is one more significant drop to shake people out. You build up the hype of the having people pile in, and then there's one final big buying opportunity for, for these, these big wallets. Interesting. Exactly. To say the least. If, if you think about it this way, if, if everybody uniformly believes that the having is a bullish event, it decreases the likelihood that it will be a bullish event because there needs to right. be, Sell pressure. There needs to be people that that are not believers, uh, in order for these these uh, opportunities to uh, present themselves, where whales and sharks can even buy. So uh, yeah. it's we're going to see a little more polarization, and I think you're absolutely right that there can be some more mini pullbacks at the very least. Definitely, yeah, and just the simple fact that we are in a position now where Bitcoin has established a new all-time high. It has largely, you know, barring that 60K realm drop that we had, remained in that vicinity all the way leading up to the halving so far. We're already in uncharted territory with, with regard to this. So I think you'll, that'll drive some of that polarization that you're talking about. Totally. Yeah, it's exciting times. And if we look at the price returns a little bit, too, you know, this is the seven day returns. These are just the social uh, mentions mm-hmm. compared to the week prior. You can see Bitcoin and Ethereum have actually been discussed significantly less compared to the prior week where the all-time high occurred. So that makes perfect sense. All the media outlets are picking up on Bitcoin and spreading the amount of discussions uh, when the all-time high occurs. So now that things have settled down, that provides those opportunities for dip buys with less resistance, just like these whales and sharks have been licking their chops and hoping for. And uh, just looking at the past week, you know, Bitcoin now back up above 70.2K. That's a 2.7% rise. But there's a lot of big altcoin stories going on right now. Tuncoin up 44%, ICP 37, Stacks 35, Phantom 26, Lido 28, Arweave 28, Floki 32, Conflux 28, and Synthetics plus 29%, just to name a few. This is over the past week, and just to give perspective, I can change it to 30 days here, and they get even more enormous. Bitcoin up 36% in the past 30 days. Uh, The big Mm -hmm. leaders, meme coins, uh, as I'm sure most of you have read about, (laughs) absolutely taking off. And these are legitimate top 100 market cap assets now, guys. Whiff up 817% at over 9x over the past 30 days. Pepe, 574 Loke 614. I, I mean, it's just staggering, staggering numbers here. So, Brian, can you can you answer me this? Because you know, I talk about data on the channel a lot because that's my personality. I am not necessarily a TA guy, but I like fundamental data, um, behavioral data. And of course, that's what sentiment's all about. Can you talk about how the, the social trend data that we're looking at here can help you predict or preempt what, what may happen in the market, and maybe some of the patterns that you've seen, again, knowing that nothing's perfect, but having these indicators in your back pocket as you're making a strategy is really helpful. 
Yeah, totally. So we've got this social trend dashboard here that I refer to all the time when I'm making insights about the markets. And mm -hmm. what it's doing is mathematically, not using any sort of bias, looking at the most trending topics at any given time. These are basically the things that are driving the markets most, whether they're bullish or bearish, <coughs> um, according to the crowd's perception. And when we see, you know, for example, words like Binance, uh, it's usually negative, right? If exchanges are being talked about a lot, uh, it's often something related to a concern um, and lack of trust and uh, rising interest in self-custody. And that appears to sort of be the case here because they're suspending, you know, support for USD deposits and withdraw withdrawals for Tron. Um, which which always scares people. Tron isn't the largest asset in the world, but it's certainly notable. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's a sign of FUD. You know, we see certain assets that are popping up like ICP. Usually this is because of a price surge, which ICP, as we just talked about, is one of those surging assets. Tether tends to be a negative related word uh, because of the fact that people don't want to think about the stable coins. They just want them to be stable. And if they're popping into the news, it's usually because of some sort of concern related to it. So we can look at some of those basic words, and then more specifically, we can look at which coins are trending. Uh, and I love this dashboard. Our, mm -hmm. our team did an amazing job of putting together something meaningful that can be instantly used when you, uh, you know, look through the snapshot of what's going on. And we can see, like, for example, Tether is up here as the third most trending asset. Uh, and it gives an AI-generated summary of why it's trending. Looks to be related to Binance futures, Bybit futures, KuCoin futures. Uh, and then it gives a bearish summary and a bullish summary. Obviously, it's going to be more exciting for an asset that's very volatile, like Doge, which appears to have an extreme bullish bias right now. So if you're a mm -hmm. Doge holder or perhaps a Doge shorter, or you're interested in accumulating Doge, you can look at this and realize, okay, the crowd seems to be quite euphoric related to Doge, whether it's price related or something else. And because of that, it's probably not the ideal time mathematically to get into Doge or add on to your position until the crowd kind of settles down and, and ensues a bit more fear in the way that they're perceiving it. So. That's just kind of a, a couple examples of how we like to look at uh, the bullish versus bearish sentiment. If you want to look at like the overall markets, for example, you can click on this button here where it says search for social topics. And then you'll see the search bar come up. And I can write something like uh, buy or buying, hit enter, and it's going to scrape all of the Telegram, Reddit, uh, 4chan, Bitcoin talk uh, and X mentions of buy or buying over time to see how euphoric people are. And you can see they were actually much more excited about buying Bitcoin on that initial run up before it hit 70K the first time. Once it did, especially around this all time high, a lot less talking about it. And as prices started to get super volatile, even on this rebound, just less and less optimism related to buying. Uh, and the prospect of that. And as a result, I believe that the price was able to run up with less resistance due to the lack of FOMO. When you do see a lot of FOMO, mm -hmm. the opposite reaction tends to occur. So this is one of my favorite simple charts to reference. Yeah, th this is the type of stuff that I, that I really like, especially in the last view two, looking at giving a bullish and bearish case for people to springboard off of. It's like, here are both sides of the story and you can use some data to figure out which one you're on. Um, or if it's unclear, don't touch it. And uh, I think that's, more people should be doing data-driven decision-making in this space than sentiment-driven stuff, uh, ironically, the, the play on the, on the word. Because uh, if, you, if you're just on X and you're looking at the whole timeline saying, buy Doge, you may be tempted to buy Doge because you're saying, oh, a dollar's programmed because that's what you're being fed. Um, but if you actually look at the trends and you look at the data, it may tell a different story. Uh, it may quell your expectations related to something like that. Now, yeah. obviously, you may 
someone in the audience may think Doge is programmed to one. That's up. That's your thing. But uh, just using it as an example. Yeah, that's really well said. And uh, you know, a lot of people believe in this sentiment related uh, type of analysis and, and the way that sentiment kind of drives markets, which they should. That is what drives markets at the end of the day, along with whale and shark behavior. That's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it's it's almost impossible to analyze those kinds of things unless you have some objective data. Anyone can look at their X timeline right now and just see five or six posts that either say they're bullish or bearish, but that's not going to give you a comprehensive, true look at no. the millions upon millions of opinions that are forming at any given time. And it's actually those like smaller opinions in, in mass that have more of an impact than like one guy with 200,000 followers who makes a lot of correct trade calls. And I think people kind of have that backwards sometimes. Yeah, and, and this confluence of sort of social trend, things like just a huge tent pole on a specific coin is often a lagging indicator. Uh, and I'd love to get your opinion, but from my observation, it's often a lagging indicator that um, the opportunity for that particular coin is, is passing right or has passed yep. because everyone's talking about it um your your room for material gains has started to diminish by the time you start to see that in the social data um you know ondo is the one that i've seen all over the place and if you think about how x amplifies things to con confirm your bias in a way is if you click if you search that ticker ondo and you look at some bullish posts it's going to keep feeding you more of those Right? Yep. It's going to keep feeding you more because you're interacting with those. So you have to be really careful about that. You're 100% spot on. I mean, it's it's not a coincidence that Ondo is the number one trending asset right now uh, due to the fact that its <coughs> price has been enormous. And you can see, especially when social volume gets hot, that's what this blue is. The red is the price. So when social volume gets hot, mm -hmm. that tends to be when the price starts to correct. Sometimes it'll be right after the top, sometimes right before you know, I actually see this most commonly because it's people who see a very small dip right after the price top and they're like, all right, now I can go and get more Ondo, it's time to buy it. Yeah. And then the price proceeds to continue to drop until the, the social interest goes away a little bit. Um, and that's what you see with most of these assets here. Obviously, Tether doesn't count because mm -hmm. it's for a different reason and it's a stable coin, but most of these here are trending due to surging prices that are significantly ahead of what's going on with Bitcoin right now. Uh, Boba seems to be an exception. Maybe it has, I mean, I guess right now it has a bullish, very bullish sentiment, but it did have a big drop over the past 24 hours or so, and now it's starting to rise. But most of these, as you can see with the red chart here, are, are just super surging assets that suddenly draw all of the FOMOers out of the woodwork to talk about what a great opportunity it is when the reality is it's the opposite. These are the ones that are most likely to retrace over the next 24 to 48 mm -hmm. hours based on math. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you look at it though, you know, for some people are gonna say, oh, well, you know, Ondo, for example, I think that real world, you know, RWA, real world asset tokenization is the play for this, you know, one, for this cycle, one of those big plays. So Ondo is a long-term hold for me. Right, so maybe this picture doesn't shake your conviction and that is a long-term play. And that's great. If you're thinking about this in really short time horizons, you know, a day, a week, et cetera, it can help you make decisions about making a new entry, you know, building your position if that's what you're interested in doing or trimming if you're looking to take some profits off the table. Yeah. So this is not necessarily the thing you look at to think about what does this mean for it on a month, six month or a year long time. That's line. totally right. And, you know, we even have these bullish and bearish summaries. I'm not going to read all of this or even try to summarize them, but yeah. they're pretty accurate. I mean, th what we do is we scrape all of the conversations going on related to Ondo and all these other assets. And it gives you a true summary based on what the exact context is that's being spread the most from people who are bullish like this or people who are bearish and talking about things like this. And then it'll just give an overall reason that mm -hmm. it's trending without the bullish and bearish argument. So you have many different perspectives. You've got connected words, RWA, of course, being one of them, related to the conversations going on with Ondo right now. It's, I mean, we're lucky that AI has had so many advancements in the last year because it's given us 
a lot of power to, to put this kind of stuff together. Definitely. That's why I've always been, you know, keen to have, have you, uh, on the channel because these types of tools are how I'm, I make my decisions in the market largely. Um, some of it's based on intuition, but a lot of it's based off of data. So I want to share that with people. And if anyone's interested in using sentiment, I will leave a link in the description below for you to check it out. Uh, this is one of the tools that I use and probably, a uh, the very top of the list in terms of ones that I that I like using, but um, but let's move on to the next the next indicator. Yeah, thanks, right? my friend. I know we're we're gonna try to wrap things up in a minute, but uh, I do want to mention the fact that we also have models like this. If you want to look at specific coins in terms of average returns, right? Because it's mm -hmm. everyone gets the uh, notion of buying low and selling high, and in crypto. You know, the question is, what time frame are you looking at? Are you looking at a weekly time frame <laughs> or a yearly time frame when it comes to what a low and a high even is? And it, what is a high when we're at an all time high level like we essentially are right now still? Uh, and what this does is it's measuring the average returns of traders. So basically, it's combining the average returns of any wallet that's been active over the past 30 days or the past 90 days or the past six months, blending them all together and seeing how far above 0% they are or how below 0% they are. When they're well above 0%, as you would imagine, almost every asset, the average traders on these midterm time frames are well above 0%, that means that the asset is mathematically being signaled as overbought. This does signal that we're at an increased risk, increased risk of a correction or an increased risk of, of you adding onto your position right now and getting portfolio gains due to the fact that the other traders who have already been in these respective assets, as shown in the x-axis, they're already up a significant amount of money. So you'd be getting in on the tail end of their profits. So in order for you to profit, if you opened a position and, you know, let's say, IDEX or Eternity Chain, some of these small cap assets, you'd be trying to gain profits on the tail end of other people who already have a lot of profits in them. So you're more mm -hmm. likely to do well by buying into those ignored assets that have been kind of written off right now. I'm not going to suggest, you know, from an investment advice perspective that Bounce or Frax or P Network are great buys, but from a math perspective, they are the ones that have a better shot of outperforming the markets if they're a viable project, which I don't know enough about them. Uh, I can't track the intricacies mm -hmm. of 500 coins, but you get the idea. You want to yeah. avoid the red, jump into the green whenever that's possible. Yeah, and, and thinking about how this applies to some of the stuff we've talked about on the channel related to building a crypto strategy you know say you have two three narratives that you're following this this particular cycle and you have a clear thesis about where these things go um, this could be helpful for you in figuring out how what well, could be one data point not the data point but one data point in how you you action on that strategy you know there's a coin in here that looks like it's ripe ripe for um for buying at this point in time you know it's in the it's in the green zone Maybe that's one data point in, in the picture for you. Um, or maybe it's on the bottom end of the curve, right? So some of these like orange or, or yellow sort of neutral or semi overbought, maybe if you have high conviction, that's still of interest to you, Brian. Maybe there's room to run still as long as it's not in that. That's, zone. that's a great point. Yeah, it's not just about, you know, ignoring anything that isn't green. You know, sometimes you can look at the average yeah. of all the assets and say, well, this one's still in the yellow when most when the average is like you know somewhere between that orange and red zone so i'm still getting in relatively yeah. well makes yeah, yeah. sense yeah I, I this is really interesting stuff and this compare you know combined with sort of the holders one of the common ones you and i have talked about in the past is like holders yep. in profit wallets in profit you know powerful stuff. yeah there's so much there's so much and and we'll split you know, some of the metrics into further episodes to, uh, you know, keep things, keep things fresh and, and stick to a few topics in each, in each video we do. But uh, I'm really excited to be making videos with you once again and talking with the community and 
Uh, you know, we're super receptive to hearing what people want to know more about, what can be clarified, and uh, we just love to talk markets. So I'm, I'm excited to do more of this. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks very much for coming back on. Glad we could rekindle this series. Uh, we'll definitely keep them coming. So folks, let me know in the comments below what coins you'd like us to take a look at. Maybe we'll take some suggestions in the future from the community in terms of which, co which coins that we analyze, or um, please share some information about how you're, you're strategizing the market and what type of insights that you'd like to see. We can factor those in for future episodes. Uh, so again, Santiment is linked in the description below if you wanna start checking out their data-driven insights. Uh, and as always, thanks very much for watching this and every other episode of Crypto Over Coffee. And thanks to Brian for Discount joining us. Discount code Hishoshi, by the way, if you want 25% off of your first purchase uh, on the Santiment pricing page, which you can find here. Excellent. Thanks, Brian, as always, for the discount code for the for the folks in the audience. So hope you have a great rest of your week, folks. And until next time, cheers.